I remember the night my mother gave birth to my younger brother Reggie. It was the 7th of October, a bone-chilling night filled with heavy rain. I was only 13 at the time when my parents, forced to leave me home alone, rushed to the hospital. It must have been around 2 a.m. when they departed, leaving me with their reassurances that they would return soon. Just go back to sleep, baby. When you wake up, we'll be here, okay? My father whispered, trying to calm my anxious mind. I reluctantly climbed back into bed, tossing and turning, desperately seeking sleep. Through the glass of my bedroom door, I caught a glimpse of something unsettling. It was a vague, shadowy figure, a small silhouette darting from the hallway to the kitchen, located directly across from my room. As the shadow moved, I could distinctly hear the pitter-patter of tiny footsteps and the faint sound of laughter. Fear gripped me, and I called out, Mommy, Daddy, is that you? My desperate screams echoed through the empty house, but there was no response. Summoning every ounce of courage, I decided to investigate the kitchen. As I entered, an icy chill enveloped me, despite the rest of the rooms feeling perfectly normal. The voices I had heard earlier, the playful laughter of a child, persisted. Suddenly, a small ball bounced off the counter and rolled to a stop at my feet. Perplexed and unnerved, I watched as a little boy emerged from behind the counter, inching closer until he was mere centimeters away. I tried to scream, but my voice failed me, trapped in the grip of a nightmare. The boy wore outdated clothes, reminiscent of the 80s, and a wide, unsettling smile adorned his face. He extended his hand towards me, his words chilling my very core. Let's be friends, he whispered. My body moved involuntarily, as if under his control. He took hold of my hand, and we began to run, playing a twisted game throughout the house. I was powerless, unable to scream or speak, trapped in his macabre play. One detail that remains etched in my memory is the reflection in the hallway mirror. I could see my own reflection, but the boy had none. He was devoid of any presence in the mortal realm. We continued this eerie dance for hours as daylight slowly crept in. With each passing moment, the boy's form grew more translucent, as if on the verge of vanishing entirely. He whispered, Let me show you a little trick, and placed a metal fork in my trembling hands. To my horror, the fork twisted and contorted as if defying the laws of nature, and then, in an instant, he vanished, leaving me with fragmented memories. When I finally mustered the courage to share my experience with my parents, they dismissed it as a mere nightmare of my childhood. As I grew older, I too began to question the reality of that nightmarish encounter. However, a few months ago, at the age of 27, I stumbled upon something in the attic that shattered my doubts. The same twisted fork from that haunting night it was a chilling reminder that what I had experienced was not a mere fragment of my imagination, but a sinister encounter that defied explanation. As a child, there were many times when I found myself home alone as both of my parents worked. This is a story that actually happened to me. I was in eighth grade and came back from school earlier than usual. Since I had a spare key to the house, I let myself in and locked the door behind me. I always enjoyed having some alone time at home, all cozy enjoying the smell of the rain from outside, playing video games and watching TV without my mom constantly reminding me to do my homework. After hours of playing video games, I decided it was time to do a bit of homework before my parents came back. 
I sat at the kitchen table with my textbooks open, trying to solve some math problems our teacher had assigned. To my right were my parents' room and my own room, and to my left was a short hallway leading to the bathroom. As I focused on my work, I suddenly heard a woman's voice calling me by my childhood nickname, Tweety. My blood ran cold as the voice sounded exactly like my mom's, but I was certain she wasn't home. The door was locked and the house was empty. I tried to convince myself it was just my imagination. It was raining heavily and thought that it might just be it. But then the voice spoke again, saying, Tweety, come here. This time, it came from the bathroom, and I noticed a shadow cast on the hallway door. Without hesitation, I jumped up, ran towards the door, unlocked it, and sprinted outside, terrified and crying. My heart was pounding so fast, I thought it might stop at any moment. I sat in our front yard, keeping my distance from the front door as I closely kept my eye watching for anyone to come out of the house, but no one did. Finally, when both of my parents arrived home, a bit confused as to why I was outside, I told them everything. They searched the house thoroughly, but found nothing after all. Fast forward to today. It's been more than 10 years since that incident, my father passed away three years ago, and now I live with my mother. She often tells me about hearing my dad's voice calling her from the living room. She would go into the living room, only to find nothing there. It's a strange and unsettling experience that we both share. A reminder of the unexplained mysteries that can occur in our lives. I've spent my entire life with my mother since my father left us when I was just three years old, living in a small house located in the suburbs. When I turned 13, a childhood friend named Jessica, who had been separated from us for a few years, returned to our town as her father got a new job there. We were both thrilled to reunite, having only been able to communicate through Skype during our time apart. To celebrate Jessica's return, we decided to have a sleepover party my mother, a surgeon, cooked us dinner and made delicious little cakes for us to enjoy during the night. However, around midnight, she received an urgent call for a surgical intervention and had no choice but to leave home. It was late, and she didn't want to disturb Jessica's parents by asking them to come and pick her up. We assured her that we would behave, and she trusted us with that. She locked all the doors before leaving and gave both of us cellular phones to call if anything happened. We also had our loyal German Shepherd, T-Rex, to protect us if anything bad happened. We spent the evening talking, playing games, and sharing our favorite music. We giggled about crushes and indulged in all the typical activities that girls our age enjoy. As the night grew late, exhaustion overcame us and we decided it was time to sleep. I settled into my bed, while Jessica slept on a soft mattress on the floor. In the middle of the night, I felt a strange sensation on my face, something that irritated me and jolted me awake. To my horror, I saw Jessica's face hovering inches from mine. She stood at the edge of my bed, leaning down, her long hair cascading over my face. Startled, I jumped out of bed and asked her what was wrong. Jessica didn't respond. She stood there, seemingly possessed by some malevolent force. I could hear her mumbling in a haunting rhyme, as if she were singing a twisted melody. Then, she began to move in circles around my bed, clapping and jumping with an eerie rhythm. Terrified, I quickly retreated from the room. I felt guilty for leaving Jessica behind, but I locked the door to protect myself. Soon after, Jessica started pounding on the door with alarming aggression. 
I hurried downstairs to use the phone since my cell was left in the room. I called my mother, panic evident in my voice, and she reassured me that she was on her way home. Within minutes, she arrived, calming me down before we went back upstairs to open the door. To our surprise, Jessica was peacefully asleep in her bed, looking like an innocent angel. The next day, when I asked Jessica about the incident, she had no recollection of what had transpired. After sharing the story with her parents, we discovered that Jessica had a condition called somnambulism, also known as sleepwalking, which explained her actions during the night. That experience was truly terrifying, one that will forever be etched in my memory.